The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Hi, and welcome back to The Learning Circuit. Today, we're going to use a flip-flop to make a toggle circuit. In the last lesson, I talked about SR and JK flip-flops, but I didn't talk about flip-flops that have preset and clear as inputs, so we'll use one of those today. For today's project, we're using a 74LS74. As you can see on the product page, it's an SR flip-flop. But rather than those pins being labeled set and reset, they are labeled preset and clear, but have the same basic functions. I'll set up the chip on the breadboard so you can see how it works. The chip has a nominal voltage of five volts. My little desktop power supply only has typical battery voltages, three, four and a half, six, seven and a half, nine, and 12. So I'm going to use 4.5 volts for the demonstration, a little less than nominal, but it'll work. The 74LS74 is a dual flip-flop, meaning it contains two flip-flops. We'll just be using the first one. In the flip-flop lesson episode, we learned that inputs clock, data, S and R, or in this case, preset and clear, can all affect the outputs Q and not Q. For the demo, I'm gonna connect each of those inputs to a button so I can control each input manually. Let's get this thing hooked up. Okay, we have our chip with pin one here and pin 14 over here. So we'll start by hooking up pin seven to ground and pin 14 to power. Now we'll look at pins one through four, our inputs. Now we don't ever wanna leave these floating, so we'll add some 10 kilo ohm resistors for those. Preset, clear, and clock are active low inputs. To make their default state inactive, they should always be connected to VCC. So we'll do this using a 10 kilo ohm pull-up resistor for each. The data input works a little differently. It's basically active high, going high when connected to VCC and low when connected to ground. So we'll use the resistor to connect pin two to ground to make its default state low. We'll add a button for each of the four inputs. Since preset, clear, and clock are active low, their buttons are going to connect to ground, while data's button is connecting to VCC. Last up is our outputs Q and not Q. I'll use a couple LEDs with current limiting resistors to connect the outputs to ground. That way we can see when they're high or low, green for Q and red for not Q. Okay, we'll just connect to our power supply. Turn on. Let's see how this works. So if I hit preset, Q goes high, turning the green LED on. And remember that not Q is the inverse of Q, so the red LED is off. If I press clear, Q is reset to low. So the green LED is off, and then the red LED for not Q turns on. You can actually find this information on the data sheet. A low level at preset or clear. That tells us these inputs are active low. Sets or resets the outputs regardless of the levels of the other inputs. Let's move on to the data pin. The data signal is only sent to the outputs on the positive edge of the clock pulse. Changing the data signal alone does nothing. The clock has to pulse in order to send the data signal to the outputs. So if I hit preset to make Q high, data is currently low. So when I trigger the clock, it transmits data's low signal to output Q. If I hold data high and trigger the clock, data's high signal is sent to output Q. If the data signal doesn't change when the clock is triggered, nothing happens at the output because it's still sending the same signal. If data and output Q are high, the clock pulse doesn't change the outputs. If data and output Q are low, again, the clock doesn't change anything. So preset alone sets the output high and clear alone resets the output back to low. Clock acts as a valve for data, sending the data signal at the positive edge of the clock pulse. So the output is only changed by the data signal if the data signal is different than the current status of the output and only when the clock pulses. Okay, hopefully you've got a good understanding of how our inputs affect our outputs. Now let's turn it into a toggle. What I mean by toggle is the inputs changing, flip-flopping at the press of a single button. 
Let's take a look. To start, we want preset and clear to always be inactive. So we'll remove their buttons, but leave the pull-up resistors to keep them held inactive high. Next, rather than manually triggering the data input with a button, we'll connect it to pin 6, not Q. Since not Q will always be either high or low, we don't need a grounding resistor, so we can remove that too. The remaining clock button will be our toggle trigger. That's it, easy peasy, let's see it in action. If I press the clock button, the outputs toggle or flip-flop. If Q is high, it'll go low. If it's low, it'll go high. The data pin is taking its signal from not Q. Since not Q is always the inverse of Q, data will always be in whatever state Q isn't. So when we trigger a positive edge of the clock pulse, whoop, that inverse signal is sent to output Q and it flip-flops. All right, well we have our circuit. Now it's time to turn it into some kind of project. And I have an idea. I think I'm gonna take inspiration from a certain character named Scott Hope from a certain vampire show I happen to be fond of. Yes, yes, I think that will do. Mm, let's do this. <laughs> I added a 7805 voltage regulator, which allows me to run my circuit off of a nine volt battery and still get the five volts I want for my chip. I switched to using super bright LEDs and they want closer to three volts, so my current limiting resistors are now 100 ohm resistors. And I added a nice little power switch so I can turn the whole thing on and off. Hopefully I have some fellow Buffy fans out there that are excited about my new little sign. Now this circuit has a lot of different uses. Uh, right now to trigger it, there's a button, but if you added a 555 timer, you could make it so that it switches automatically. But we'll cover that in a later episode. In the meantime, I wanna hear your project ideas for this circuit. Tell me about those on the Element 14 community on element14.com forward slash the learning circuit. Happy learning.